there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, with over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. Now, you don't need me to tell you that not all customers have the same perception of what great audio is for their vehicle. Have you ever had one of those customers that just loud was never loud enough and everywhere they wanted to go, they wanted to be the center of attention and want to be heard? Well, maybe what you've had in your hands is a potential customer for pro audio. Today on CMA Connected, we've got Pioneer Electronics in the house because they've come up with an entire solution suite for that pro audio customer. And we're going to tell you all about it today. This is CMA Connected, presented by Sirius XM, Pioneer, and it starts now. What's going on? Thanks for tuning in to another CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu, and we are launching. This is our very first episode with our final sessions uh, theme of the year, which is going to be about pro audio. Now, some of you might be very familiar with the term and others, you may be hearing about it for the first time. Why would CMA put together an entire session on this division? Well, I'll tell you what. I venture that this may be the next fastest growing segment within the car audio segment that you might not even really know about. Now, some of you might have seen pictures or imagery of pro audio builds, maybe from the Russia area of the world, or maybe even South America, where it's very important uh, and popular for that matter. But slowly but surely, that culture is starting to spread. And sooner or later, you're going to have a customer that's going to come in and ask you specifically for that. But before that, what we want to achieve today <clears throat> is we want to present to you these fantastic suite of products that Pioneer has to offer within the Pro Audio range, but also we're, there's going to be some dialogue about how to recognize and identify this customer when they walk into your store. But before, without further ado, let's go ahead and bring in our guest today that's going to help us on this journey. Let's reach out first to our friend at Pioneer Canada. He's the Senior Sales Territory Manager, Mr. Robert Money. Hi, Ben. How are you? Robert, good to have you back. Um, pretty exciting stuff. <laughs> We're talking about a category that, I mean, I'm going to say it, it's it's not the most well-known category. You know, we recently we talked about audiophile and everybody knows what audiophile and high-end stuff is. But when I mentioned pro audio, Robert, to a couple of dealers, they're like, what exactly is pro audio, Ben? Yeah, actually, that, that's, a, that's a good point. Yeah, because because pro audio for most people mm -hmm. are, are the big speakers that we can see within a show so if you attend any rock concert or something like this uh most people will do the uh will associate those those type of speakers to to that type of event so uh pro audio actually uh for pioneer is a acronym so it, it's not just about that pro name so so we build something around that uh is basically an acronym for pioneer which means pioneer reference for open show. Open show. I like the keyword at the end, open show. And I think that's really going to be the theme that's going to carry out through today's discussion anyhow. Um, and from what I understand, Robert, we have, I mean, this is interesting. I'm going to tell you right now. I was not aware that Pioneer had this range of products. So when I found out about it, I was quite pleasantly surprised. And not only was I surprised, but to see the detail, the aesthetics. Guys, I'm telling you, wait till you see this stuff. This might shock you on, on this entire range dedicated to this customer. But you know, we're going to go through it, obviously. Um, what do you say we bring in our our trainer, our product specialist to help us with today's show? Uh, you guys know him as the national trainer for Pioneer. Well, we just call him Harry. Harry Kroll, what's going on here? Great to be here, Ben. Thank you so much for having us on. Robert, pleasure to see you again. 
Now, uh, Harry, we're jumping in. Uh, you guys are opening off this uh, pro audio sessions. And uh, was I right to um, mention that, you know, it's kind of starting to gain traction, maybe even a little bit more than that statement, um, especially in the southern U.S. I, we're starting to see a lot of that through social media and even on an international scale, seeing that Pioneer is an international company. Of course, um, these are products that have been developed in other areas of the world that we are now bringing to the North American uh, market. Is that correct? Yeah, that's very much the case, Ben. Um, the, the the pro series of products is uh, you, you saw it early on in Eastern Europe. You saw it in South America. And, you know, it's the, the crazy stuff that you see at shows, kind of like uh, the U.S. SEMA show or the U.S. Uh, CES show, where, you know, you get those show cars that have 100 speakers in the bed of a pickup truck or something like that. This is the type of product that we're that we're looking at. And, and um, this is not necessarily necessarily like you're going to get a hundred speakers to put in your pickup truck, but this is the, the, the type of the product they're designed to be seen. And, and you're going to see when we show you cosmetically, this is entirely, entirely different than any other pioneer mm -hmm. speakers that you've seen before. If you're not familiar with this product and uh, it, it is, um, you know, designed to be seen where most speakers are often hidden behind a grill or maybe hidden behind a factory grill. And one of the reasons that people don't like to replace their speakers is because you don't see them. Right. They mm. want to replace the in-dash receiver because it's full of flashing lights and and, you know, small, shiny objects, that sort of thing. It's exciting to look at. Speakers aren't exciting to look at in most cases. They're hidden behind a grill. You hear them and enjoy them. But in this case, these pro speakers. They are big, loud, and they look big and loud along with it. So two points I want to <clears throat> point out here. Number one, of all the, let's call it head unit companies out there, Pioneer is the only one that I've seen that's actually dedicated an entire section, segment, category to this you know, um, pro audio thing. That's number one. So I want to give you credit for that. The second thing is we, I wanted to kind of start the show just by identifying, because I'll tell you right now, if we haven't lost them already, there's dealers tuning in and be like, what are you guys talking about right now? Like, what do you mean a wall of speakers? Okay, so let's back up a few steps. <clears throat> okay. Let's, let's talk about the pro audio customer. And this is very important. To, we, we won't, we're, the whole theme is about having product catered for this type of customer. So I'll give you an example. You know, when there's a customer that's coming in and, you know, your job as a dealer is to probe said customer, right? You want to be able to get to understand the customer, find out what kind of music they like, find out what their listening habits are. When are they listening to it in their vehicle? Some some people love a nice, high quality, high fidelity sound system because they have a 40 minute drive to work every day and they want something super slick. They've got a nice, I don't know, maybe a BMW or something. That's one type of customer. But that's not the only type of customer that walks through your store. Yeah, that is correct, right? sir. What if you had a customer that comes in and he's like, man, I got three kids. We're big into football. We tailgate every weekend and we are the party. You should see our barbecue. You should see this. And I got my pickup truck and I want to be the life of the party. Well, maybe that customer is not necessarily the sound cue customer like the previous situation I discussed. Maybe this potentially could be a pro audio customer. Harry, I'd like to know what you think about that. Uh, you're, you're dead on with that, Ben. That's exactly right. That that guy wants something that he can play outdoors. Um, not let's say that these are waterproof speakers per se. They are not, but they are designed to be used outdoors. This is what they do. They play loud and they cut through the din that happens in a party. Uh, this is the type of speaker that uh, if you go to clubs and hear bands play live, they need that band needs to have the type of volume to cut through the noise at a bar that's going on. This is what the speaker is designed to do. And, and I'll go one step further with that. That's a great identification of a customer. And it's certainly not every guy that walks in the door. But another identification of that customer is a guy that comes in and says, I blew up the tweeters again. <laughs> you know, you told me to buy this tweeter and I blew up the tweeter again because I want to hear nothing but bass and tweeter. And it doesn't matter to me what's in the middle. Well, here's some interesting news because I have like a three and a half pound tweeter. Uh, it And it will handle a little bit of power if you throw it at it. And you are going to hear this thing. In fact, these tweeters are sold as ones, not as pairs, because you might want to put 36 six by nines and one of these tweeters. That's the kind of loud it is. Uh, that's, you know, this is um, like, you know, your, your, your common car stereo is speakers sold as pairs uh, and, you, you know, and they have to be symmetrical and everything that you do. 
you know, don't get dragged down into that. If you were looking for something interesting and we're going to the bonfire and or we're going to the, the tailgate before the hockey game, we are going to make this happen. And people are going to hear me at the other end of the parking lot and wonder what's going on. A hundred percent. And my final one that I can think of now, and I'm sure there's going to be more examples as we you know develop this conversation. But I can think of another one where maybe it's a first time car audio customer. And in their mind, they wanted to go boom, boom, and be loud. So when they're cruising down the streets, they're risking a ticket. But that's what they want. Because for yeah. them, that's what – it's car audio. It's fun. It's my first car. I want to be heard. I want everybody to know. That could yeah, be I, a, another I, potential customer. Actually, this is a great example, Ben. And in many situations, if you just ask the customers, uh, do you love bass? Maybe at the first time, they will say, no, I, I, I'm just – I just love to listen to good music, loud, but I'm not a bass lover. And and if you put some track, doing some interaction with the customers, you'll find maybe that that mm -hmm. customers want to be loud and clear. And in, in many scenarios, we also saw in the past, previous life, because uh, I started as at 16 and I'm no longer 16, but <laughs> not far off, Rob. I'm sure. <laughs> Just a bit. <clears throat> so, so if you look at those guys with 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 the uh, three, four subwoofers, uh, maximize with the amplifiers to go with it. In many situations, they don't have the mid-range drivers in the tweeter to match that output from the subwoofers, and that's why they are blowing tweeters. So, mm. so, so maybe they're asking just... drivers that they have to do things they cannot do and try to compensate. Yeah, that's what they're doing. actually, so, 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 so you need to you need to find the best <clears throat> uh, match that will meet customers' requests or needs. So, so it's not just about. Uh, a subwoofers that is way more efficient than, than typical subwoofers. Uh, uh, same thing for the tweeters and mid range. So, so we can use, of course, those uh, in a way to uh, simulate the rock concert <laughs> outside with you know, the friends. Pro could, doing... pro could definitely be um, um, exchanged for the word live because really every yeah. live performance that's amplified, right? That's not uh, that's yeah. not unplugged. That's amplified. Is you're listening to it through a live set of components. That's what you're doing at, at a concert. Yeah. It really sure. is what it is. Like, so, <clears throat> okay, let's get on with there, this. If you are doing it open door or closed doors in the car, so so if you love exactly. to listen to it loud, mm -hmm. that's your. And choice. again, you know, do you like listening to small little cafe performances, or are you into the Thunderdome? I mean, it's really what it is that you like. Uh, Harry, why don't you break yeah. out, break down for us what we're about to go through today with this uh, presentation? Okay, so I have a short presentation put together, uh, Ben, to show you the different products in this lineup, and there's just a handful of them. Um, we're going to show you some tweeters, some mid-bass drivers, 6x9, and a woofer that is all part of Pioneer's Pro Series, uh, and we'll kind of break down the performance of each one of them. But um, uh, are you going to, if you bring up my first slide there, uh, yeah. this is really about um, that, that, open show speakers and open show speakers means they are sort of flashy looking to begin with. Uh, and that is not a mistake. Okay. You can see uh, in the slide here, the subwoofer with the um, uh, anodized aluminum red uh, basket behind it. You can see the two tweeters here. Yes. Both of those are tweeters um, and they have the red uh, bullet um a phase plug in the middle there. Uh, and we'll show you a, a one that has a black phase plug in it as well. So click over to my next slide. And this uh, is out of the gate, Harry. I just I need to make this comment. This is a sexy looking range of product. I don't even know what it sounds like yet, but it looks absolutely fantastic. It looks high end and it certainly has its own um, defined style that separates itself from the yeah. other you know uh, products that Pioneer currently offers. Uh, so, ben, those I, are not plastic. Mm. Those are not plastic, by the way. So the face plug is aluminum. Aluminum so. on top of that. Yeah. Right? So, Sorry, Harry, ben, yeah, it has its mm. own style. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this can match your style or be part of your style as well. And I'll be the first one to tell you, it's not for everybody. Uh, this is for me because... I like to make some noise. I like to let people know I'm coming from a couple of blocks away. And while I'm there, I like to open the doors in my car and let people see the cool work that I've done. Uh, you know, th that's what this is about. 
Um, not to say these speakers don't sound good. They're very nice sounding speakers, but they are voiced differently than voicing. other Pioneer speakers. Mm -hmm. And the voicing of a speaker, in case you don't really understand what I'm talking about, there are tons of different speaker manufacturers in the world. Uh, and every one of them sounds just a little bit different. And because if you listen to them on a display board, some are a little louder, some are a little quieter. Some are a little darker in their tone. Some are a little brighter in their tone. That is all part of the voicing. And the materials that you use to build a speaker and that combination of the materials, how those materials fit together, it all comes into that voicing. So is it a paper cone or a polypropylene cone? Um, is it a, uh, you know, what, what are the windings on the voice coil? What is the material of the voice coil? How strong is that magnet compared to the voice coil compared to the, um, the material of the cone? All of those things come together to give you a certain type of voice or a certain tone that that speaker will produce. Some of those tones may be more pleasing to your ear than others. This one sounds very nice, but it is designed from the ground up to be loud first and bring deliver that tone as a secondary option. All right. So with this slide, really what you're looking at here is what we first saw in, in North America from... Uh, you know, from like Eastern Europe or from South America to see what was happening with this, because that's why these products were developed. Um, and they were developed to be used outdoors, put a ton of them in the bed of a pickup truck, and you can hear them across the hallway or, you know, across the, the convention center or where you happen to be. There's an emphasis here with these speakers on efficiency and on power handling capability. And those are two really important things for this concept. So the efficiency is effectively how loud will this speaker play? And we measure efficiency in a speaker. Uh, typically, this is done in an anechoic chamber. Um, and uh, well, I'll just dig into that for a second, I guess. An anechoic chamber is a room that you can walk into and it has no echo in the room. So if you clap your hands like this, it's the oddest thing. It the, the, the clap just sort of falls away. There's no echo. In a room that you are now, if you clap your hands, that sound goes out to the walls and comes back to your ears. So there's a spike when you clap your hands, but then it fades away a little over time, over a few milliseconds. In an anechoic chamber, there's no echo. It just goes boom like that. Your voice sort of falls out of your mouth. Um, it's a huge room because you're in the center of the room. It's as high to the ceiling as it is low to the floor. You don't stand on the floor. You stand on a cable suspension system in the middle of the floor. And we measure this thing by putting the speaker into a cabinet and we put a microphone about one meter away. We push one watt through the speaker and measure the decibels at the microphone. And these type of speakers typically measure oh, six or 10 dB higher than the typical TSA series speakers, TSD or TSZ series speakers that Pioneer sells. Now, but I want to give that some perspective. I, I don't want to tell you that TSAs and Zs and Ds don't have good sensitivity and efficiency. They really do very well. They're very nicely done. These ones are specifically made to be high efficiency and much louder at that same input level. I have a question for you, Harry. So with these higher efficiency ratings on these specific drivers, does it mean I don't need as much power to achieve their nominal performance? Well, okay, that's an interesting question. Um, so if I put the same amount of power into, a, into one speaker, I'll get, let's say, 87 dB out of it. Put, the, put that same amount of power into Pioneer Pro speaker, maybe I get 100. OK, so the same amount of power gives me more volume out of it. Gotcha. Does that mean I need less power for my amplifier? Mm, I wouldn't go there because amplifiers make life better and more power is usually best from an amp. Uh, so you will see at the same volume setting, per se, on your in-dash receiver, louder output from a pro speaker than you will from some other types of speakers. Right. Way louder. Okay, so let's take a look at our first couple of products here. 
Um, and just glancing at these things, they probably appear to be mid-base drivers or something else like that. But what you're looking at here are two different tweeters. The one on the left is a three and a half inch tweeter and the one on the right is a four inch tweeter. Uh, and these things are, well, they are like monsters. Um, on the left, the TSB 350 Pro, this is a three and a half inch, we'll call it a bullet tweeter. Uh, or if you're, you know, uh, if you're French Canadian like Robert, we'll call that the Le Boulet tweeter. Uh, if that's, if that makes, is that better for you? That's a uh, <laughs> this is hundred watts. That's good. That's good. A hundred watts power handling capability. Uh, and the, the, um, the, uh, frequency response of this tweeter is, 3,500 to 27,000. So that's 3,500 to 27K. Uh, the one on the right, we'll just look at it since we have them both on the screen here at the same time. This is 500 watt max or 200 watts RMS power handling capability. So that's 200 watts RMS coming straight off of an amp. That's at um, from 3,500 hertz to 27,000. That is a ton, ton, ton of power handling capability coming directly to a tweeter. Now, please note that these tweeters are sold as single units, and they are so efficient. Uh, with the this one on the right, the 350 Pro is 100 dB sensitivity, and this one on the left, uh, I said on the right, I pointed the wrong way. This one over here on the left, the TS350 Pro is. Uh, 100 dB efficiency. And this one on the right, the TSB 400 Pro is 106 dB efficiency. That's 6 dB higher. That's unbelievably <laughs> higher. Um, it might not seem like much, but it's crazy, unbelievably louder. I have to mention this comment that just came in and it makes me chuckle. I got Corey from DC Car Audio with a comment. Would you have any skin left on your face? After playing these, <laughs> these tweeters, that is a legitimate question, Corey. Thank you very much. That is, and that oh, is awesome. Goodness. But a lot, some guys don't want much skin on their face, and I Holy. like that. Okay, okay. so you, just, uh, just make ahead, my uh, I, I'll, I'll do a bit of a Vanna White thing if you so. This is the smaller so, one, yeah. This is the this smaller is the, one. Now, the notice, smaller one. This has a black uh phase plug in the middle here, mm -hmm. uh, or the 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 bullet uh in the middle, and we'll talk about what that thing does here in just a moment. It's really about uh heat dispersion for us. Uh, and then you can see the bigger one here, the four inch here. And Robert, you said that weighs like three and a half pounds or so, is that correct? Can you yes, do a actually, comparison? This one, would you do a comparison? But the, the yep. four inch tweeter and the six and a half inch speaker. Uh, so here's a too. six and a half inch uh, component speaker. And you can see that they are the magnet on that is four bigger. inch tweeter is, is bigger and thicker. All right. <laughs> so it's a single piece magnet, bigger and thicker than that you'll find on <laughs> a, 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 by the way, not an inexpensive six and a half inch mid bass driver. Um, let me understand. So this obviously is not going to flush mount into an A-pillar. No, it's not. No, okay. it, it'll, it will actually fit into some dashes. Yes, and okay. So when you have a two and a half, three-inch opening on the dash, that would work for sure. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I mean, Actually, a lot, lot of new cars have those three and a half mm -hmm. tweeter from the OEM uh, location. So, so for the guys who want it loud... You can install this on the dashboard within the uh, OEM compartment, let's say it this way, uh, and create a two-way component system with this six and a half from the same series. Uh, and and you, you'll you have the clearance from, from many car manufacturers now uh, to install this in the dash and, and, and the six and a half that we will show you a bit later to, to, to match it. So, so there's no problem. Mm. But that that piece, by the way, is is no kidding. Three, three and a half. It's it's heavy. Wow. So it's and it's, and it's full. It's full al three. aluminum. So e even here. So 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 the construction of the the main housing for for the tweeter is made out of aluminum. So so this is full aluminum construction. Aluminum bullet. Aluminum casing. So it's not plastic with aluminum plating. It, this is this is early on in the dialogue, aluminum. but I'm going to ask the question. These Pro Series speakers uh, carry the same warranty as the regular line, Robert? Yeah. Okay. Very nice. No change. All right. So same. one thing I wanted to point out with the, with the speakers here is these are sold as single units. 
And one of the reasons that it's designed to, to be sold as single units is when we, we're going to look at the six and a halfs and the eight mid base drivers here shortly. Maybe you, these things are extremely efficient. Maybe you want to put one, two, three, four, five, six and a halfs in your door and one of these tweeters. Uh, or, or maybe two of the tweeters in the door for, again, that show experience, right? Um, that's the point of selling these things as onesies rather than pairs, is you can build the system that makes the most sense for you for your show vehicle and put those tweeters where you need them the most, uh, rather than, you know, being, you know, coming as pairs and you're stuck into this idea that everything has to be symmetrical in your show car when it just doesn't have to be. You put them what, what you need, where you need it, and then you turn up the volume. I, I literally just thought of another application for this just now, as you were saying that, Harry. I mean, think about food trucks. Perfect you know, a lot, example. A lot of the times the food truck is in an open space area. They want to be the life of the party. They want to attract patrons. Man, what better way to put in a pro sound into their food truck? Just saying. Yeah, you're it, absolutely literally right. just came to my head right now. You want to have the party at your food truck. This is the way you do it. <clears throat> All right. All right, All right let's, so let's flip over, Ben, to the next slide, and we'll take a look at kind of the construction mm. of these uh, of these speakers. Now, this is the same construction for both the three and a half and the four. You can in looking at this picture here, um, but you have a cast aluminum basket. Uh, this is not a plastic or stamped steel, um, you know, uh, uh, basket. This is die cast aluminum chassis uh, or basket for this whole tweeter. The, the bullet in the middle or the phase plug in the middle is largely about thermal management, but it also has much to do with the open uh, dispersion. This has very wide dispersion characteristics, and that phase plug in the middle is a very important part of that. Now, Ben, we've talked about before with all of Pioneer speakers, we build our speakers under, under the idea of open and smooth. And that open in the open and smooth idea is very wide dispersion characteristics. So you don't have to be right in front of the speaker to be able to hear it clearly. You can be well off axis or off to the side of the speaker and still hear it very clearly. That's part of what that aluminum bullet does. The other thing is thermal management. And, um, you know, I, I know that many of people watching this show might not understand how this works. But if you see this sort of gold ring two thirds of the way down uh, on this drawing, this is the voice coil for the speaker. And by voice coil, what I mean is it is actually a super thin copper wire and it's wrapped around um, effectively. It's wrapped around the bottom of the phase plug or the bullet there. And uh, we apply voltage to that. And that's how we get the sound. We apply alternating current voltage. It changes the magnetic field and that thing vibrates back and forth. That's how we create the sound here. But when you apply voltage to that coil, it's gonna heat up just like an old fashioned cigarette lighter in your car. Now, I, I'm probably talking to some people right now who aren't even old enough to know what a cigarette lighter in your car is. But you used to have this thing, you would press in a button and it would pop back out in a couple of seconds and it would be red hot. Yep. And you could stick a cigarette on there or whatever you happen to be smoking, and you could light that thing up, and now you're rolling. Well, this voice coil could heat up that exact same way. And once it heats up and it burns, well, if it burns, the speaker has failed. And so that plug in the top helps with thermal management. It's effectively a heat sink drawing the heat away uh, from that. And that's the way the thing works. Uh, then they have. I'll just offer know, an alternative analogy, like an old school light bulb that you know you heat up the filament of the light bulb and it gets hot, versus an oh, LED which does not. A light bulb. I'd have never thought of that. I'm Thank just saying, you, Ben. Just, just, for, just to give some options. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to the yeah, so very, very cool. so that Thermal. I mean, thermal dispersion through that aluminum um, face plug. Very, very cool. All right. All right. So on the bottom is the oh, magnet. You can see the Sorry, three and a half and the four inch have, have a little bit different magnets because it's 100 watts or 200 watts RMS power handling capability. Uh, so a, a, a bigger magnet is going to be a very important part of that also with that heat dispersion. And then we have an overcurrent protection circuit built in there as well. Mm -hmm. And really what this is, is a, uh, a, a thermal uh, circuit breaker. 
if you heat this thing up to the point where it's going to, you know, o- overdo and it's going to burn out, that circuit breaker will pop. And when things cool off again, that circuit breaker is going to reset and you'll be able to play. So, you know, if you're hammering these things and they would shut off on you, uh, it might be your amplifier that shut off, but it's very likely that it was the, the speaker protecting itself. The circuit breaker goes. And when it cools a little to a more manageable level, then that circuit breaker will reconnect and, and play for you again, rather than having to replace the whole thing. So really well thought out uh, speakers here for these these two like amazing tweeters. And, and you know what? As great as it is, as impressive as it is on, on, on the cosmetic side, but on the efficiency and, and, and quality output of it, it's only $120 for that big beast here in my hand. So full wow. retail, $120 for that thing. Right. Not bad oh, at uh, all. You know what? So, so from some of the comments I see coming in, they were asking why not a Neo Magnet. Well, I think we just understood why. Price. It is a yes. very affordable tweeter using a standard magnet. That is why it, it is the price that it is. I am sure that if there was a Neo Magnet involved, that price for yeah. uh, would go up dramatically. So it it, it right. might Ben and and there's again there's the voicing of the speaker it happens here as well. So you have a combination of the the diaphragm and the voice coil material and the magnetic and the magnet material. All of these things together create a certain voicing. Now I was not involved in the voicing of these speakers. I don't want to tell you that I was, but it could be that a a ferrite magnet or some other a cobalt magnet or a ceramic magnet or any other variety of magnets makes it more expensive, but it also gives it a tone that's not as pleasing. These things happen, and, and, and so you get one, a combination of materials. Yeah. And one other things is if you put a, a, a smaller magnet, that's mean smaller material for heat dissipation. So, so the thermal management will be different as well. Very much, very good. All right, let's next jump one. over to the next one, Ben. Before we run out of time here, we have other stuff to talk about. Um, let's get, look get onto our two mid base drivers here. This is a six and a half and an eight inch mid base driver, and uh, we're going to get a careful, more careful look at the cutaway on both of these. But just like the tweeters, you have a you know a kind of a, a medium and a large for the tweeter. You have a medium and a large for the mid base drivers here that match up with them. So a six and a half inch over on the left. This is TSM. 650 Pro, uh, six and a half inch mid pace driver. Now these are sold as pairs. Okay. These speakers are sold as pairs. And then you have the eight inch over on the right, the TSM 800 Pro. Um, over on the left-hand side, that six and a half is 110 watts nominal power handling capability or RMS. All right. So, and it, it's a, you know, it will handle a ton of power, 180, or I'm sorry, 110 mm. watts for six and a half is a lot of power to be pushing out there. Um, and it is uh, 94 uh, dB is its sensitivity. So that's a, a very high for a six and a half. Um, the frequency range for these speakers is 50 hertz to 18,000. So they'll play all the way down to 50. But of course, if you're going to use a subwoofer, you're going to want to cross that over at 80, you know, or something 63 or wherever you want to do that uh, much above 50, more than likely. The eight is a, a, the bigger brother here. So much higher power handling capability, 180 watts RMS. Uh, and really from there, it's about the same speaker. Uh, other than being an eight, but uh, 180 watts RMS is a ton of power. And uh, 96 dB is the sensitivity for this thing. Again, very, very high for a speaker of this size. And then 50 hertz to 18K is the frequency response here. And let's flip over to the um, uh, to the cutaway drawing, Ben. Oh, am I here by myself? No, we got you. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. So um, as we look at the cutaway, we have a very similar design really to the tweeter. All right, we have the aluminum bullet or phase plug in the middle here that is about thermal management, but it's also about that wide dispersion characteristics that these speakers need to be used in an outdoor location. So you don't have to be right in front of them to hear what's going on. Uh, a large magnet down here, uh, again, to hold that, to deal with the power handling capability and the heat dispersion, you got to have a big fat magnet to make it work. 
Here we have a heavy gauge steel basket. So this is a stamped steel basket, but you'll find that the steel on this basket is a little heavier than it is with a Pioneer TSA or, or a, a Z or a D series speaker. And then the surround with this speaker is a an M-shaped or a corrugated surround. And that is about the excursion for the speaker and how that um, how the surround deals with the movement of the speaker cone uh, compared to the edge of the speaker. That M-shaped surround gives it room to move back and forth. Uh, so, yeah, you have... Uh, you know, a high power handling capability speaker that is phase plugged. And with that red phase plug in the middle, it matches up wonderfully to, you know, the red phase plug on the tweeter. <clears throat> and then we're going to show you the six by nine and then the subwoofer later that, you know, they're all about that red as well. Let, let, Very eye catching. Let, let's go to Robert here. Let's take a closer look at these two drivers here. Now, I, while you're showing that, I had a question come in here from uh, DC Car Audio. Are the phase plugs sealed to the cone uh, so that mm. they can be actually outside? No, they are not. So they it's not really... Sealed. It's really a, a fixed phase plug that will act also uh, as a uh, heat dissipation at the same okay. time. So audio dispersion uh, and and heat dissipation. So th the reason why I I'm showing it to you this way is in a way to let you see how we managed to run the tensile wire to the voice coil to the center unit. So it's not a 100% floating tensile wire. So, so we're doing in and out type of wave thing in, into the, uh, the, the, the spider itself to make sure that we will minimize the stress of the connection between the voice coil wire and the tensile wire just to uh, help them to, to, to be properly uh, uh, be able to, to handle that heavy excursion that Ari just mentioned. So, so it's different, different construction than, than the typical drivers you see. Right. And, and by, by the way, question. yep, Go ahead, six and a half. Uh, it, it's it's over six pounds for that one. <laughs> okay, these are and not that cones little, on the diet. I'll tell you that right now. That, that little <laughs> guy is, is uh, I think it's eight and a half pound. Let me just validate to share with you the, uh, so seven and a half pound for that one. So big power handling, but again, efficient, like Harry, you mentioned. Yeah, yeah, right. they're very efficient. And there's a question here, Ben, about the cone construction. It's a paper cone, uh, and it's a well. I'll tell you, it's it's paper cone is the simple answer, but we're going to call it a blended pulp cone uh, because the blending can change the tonal characteristics of the woofer cone as well as can change its uh, uh, ability to deal with moisture and uh, ultraviolet as well. So polypropylene is a better uh, way to deal with moisture and uh, ultraviolet in the vehicle, but high sensitivity is why we come back to paper cones for an application like this. All right. Going to the next slide, Harry? Sure. All right, so here are our six by nines. And these again are sold as a pair. And to me, this is a like really sexy sort of um, futuristic looking six by nine with that pod in the middle, uh, that, that crazy looking, I don't know, disc pod thing in the middle there. Then, but re effectively what that is, is the three and a half inch, uh, inch tweeter. It's sitting right there in the middle Wait, of this the same three and a half as in the beginning of the, uh, the presentation. It is not the exact same one because the frequency response here goes up to 40,000, 40K. And I think the frequency response on the uh, the first one was 27,000. So it's not the same one, but the dimensions on it are nearly exactly the same. Uh, so effectively, you're taking that three and a half inch tweeter and dropping it right in there uh, and uh, on top of a pulp six by nine. Um, and you have this thing absolutely screens. 92 dB is the uh, sensitivity here. 29 hertz to 40,000 hertz is the frequency response. So, you know, uh, I don't know, a dozen or so of these in the a bed dozen. of the pickup truck um, is pretty cool. And, and by the way, they're sold as pairs. So that would be two dozen. And that two would dozen. be fun. 
Uh, <laughs> they look so, I mean, this line overall, I mean, whoever was in charge of the design is so unique. It's so nice looking, the grills and everything about them. Um, now, obviously, you know, this is not one of those OEM replacement type speakers where you're just going to snap into the original place and, the, you know, the original grill will fit over it. No, that's not the case. Um, but, you know, in the case of where you have a rear deck or a spot where you can put these big six by nines, what a cool option to get some you know, both a two-way system into one space right there. With yeah, the you know, Ben, a lot of times a goal for the designer of a 6x9 <clears throat> is to get that tweeter bridge that sits in the middle of the 6x9 to be about even with the top of the speaker, or maybe a grill can have a slight hump to go over it. And this helps to get things to get installed indoors behind a factory grill or something mm -hmm. like that. That is just not the goal here at all. OK, the goal here is to be loud and in your face. And the more you see it, that's more of the goal. That's mm -hmm. more, me achieving more of the goal. And so this tweeter sits well up above the top of the um, the six by nine cone. And that is absolutely by design and designed to get your attention. Beautiful. Love it. And right. only 250 for Canada dealers. So. Retail. Well, these Retail. are not expensive products, like uh, very not. reasonable. Yeah, I guess they're also after you know. Well, you need twelve sets. This is why it's only two fifty. <laughs> That's probably the what it is right there. All right. <clears throat> All Ooh. right. So let's take a look at this Here woofer. And, uh, this woofer is a lot of fun. Um, this is. In case you're wondering, you might be looking at that and you're saying, Pioneer, oh, come on, that's stamped steel or is that plastic uh, uh, basket or something that you got there and you painted it red to look like the other stuff? No, this is die cast aluminum uh, basket on this woofer. This is a 12 inch woofer, dual voice coil, four ohm variety, 105 dB is the sensitivity Ooh. for this woofer, which is just <clears throat> extremely high. Uh, frequency response here is 20 hertz to 500 hertz, so it'll play nice and low and give you that big bunch of bottom that you're looking for. Power handling capability here is 450 watts RMS, um, so you need to push this thing with a nice big amp. I, you know, I should, I didn't say that the right way. You're gonna want to push this thing with a nice big <laughs> amp. You don't really need to because it's so efficient at that 105 dB sensitivity but you're going to want to push it with a big amp uh, and get out close to that 450 watts uh, RMS power handling capability that this thing will do. So, you know, just a couple of <clears throat> quick things to point out. Um, this is also a pulp uh, speaker cone. That's part of how we get that efficiency. And the dust cap across the top is also a pulp dust cap. You have uh, uh, the surround is the same M-shaped surround that we saw in the six and a half and the eight. And that is about the excursion and how that sort of unfolds for a good excursion. You can see the spider down here is actually a dual spider, which in many uh, applications for high power handling capability and high excursion that you're going to get with this, that dual spider helps to keep that voice coil centered and moving up and down uh, uh, around the pole very cleanly. Uh, and that, you know, the, the voice coil here is much thicker. That's part of the power <clears throat> handling capability and part of the um, uh, thermal management that you have here. And I don't think it's mentioned here on the slide, but the bobbin here is an aluminum bobbin uh, that is, you know, designed again for heat dispersion along with the, um, along with the magnet here. So, uh, you know, 450 watts nominal power handling capability. That's a lot of power, you know, and you can hammer this thing. Uh, it's designed to go in a box of about one and a half cubic feet um, with a port that's tuned to what do we I forget. Is it tuned to about 35 to 40 hertz? Right, Robert? You're right. 35 to 40 hertz, depending on the car and then installation. So uh, 1.5, 35 to 40 hertz. I, right. So I, could you put this thing in a sealed box, Ben? Yeah, you could put it in a sealed box, but that's not what it's meant to do. I don't think do. it would be happy in a sealed box, to be honest with you, Harry. It wouldn't be happy to. <clears throat> yeah, I, it's it's designed to be in a ported box. I want this thing so that I can go boom. And, you know, the ported box with that tuned down to 35 or 40 hertz, that's where you want to be with a woofer like this. And it is priced <clears throat> to move. Uh, it Just like the other products in this category, very reasonably priced. <laughs> for this product and you know frankly what i might do with the thing with something like this 
is I would mount it upside down on the box. I wouldn't oh, put that basket in the box. Clam it? Yeah, I would put it right on the top of the outside of the box and pour it out the side. And uh, we just show the know. magnet and yeah, sure. I, I, show the you're magnet, nailing it, Harry, the... because I had two comments. Number one, I can't help but think about what that would sound like if I built a cabinet for my son's base with those two, with two of those guys in a box. Oh my goodness, the efficiency would be—it's crazy, and the, the specs are amazing. But the other thing is, it's throwback, man. Like you're bringing me back to my twenties here with this type right. of setup, like a hundred percent. Hey, I, you know, I, I, when I say you should mount this thing outside of the box on top of it, down into the, into the hole, it's not like I'm inventing something new here. Back in the nineties, <laughs> this was something that we did as, you know, I wouldn't call it all the time, but you weren't surprised if you saw something like that. Not at all. Again, back when nobody cared about trunk space. Yes. It's exactly <laughs> which was right. a great time. Which was a and, great time. You know, again, if you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, look at this. I would never do that with my woofer. I would never. That six by nine sits up so high that like that. That's crazy. I would never do that. You are not this customer. If you're mm -hmm. thinking that those things, you're not, this you're not this customer. If you're thinking to yourself, wow, this is cool and this is fun. How many can I what... fit in my car? <laughs> if you're thinking that. You are this customer. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I joke about this all the time, Ben. I like to say it. We sell, we, we don't, nothing that we sell or we have here, you don't need this stuff to live. It's not food. We have to make you want it and you have to look at it and think that is fun. I can't wait to get that. Mm -hmm. These are toys for adults. Mm -hmm. It's not adult toys. It's very different. <laughs> <laughs> on fire today, Harry. Absolute fire today. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about just the anatomy what? of the subwoofer a little bit more. Uh, okay. Just to to give you one one additional point, because I already mentioned that it's priced to move. Uh, the retail price is two sixty nine Canadian for that. Canadian, piece. wow, for a beefy. And like that. to go the same way, uh, that unit weight around eighteen pounds. Yes, sir. Definitely very an eighteen old pounder. <clears throat> I wish we had one to show you for Robert to show you, but we don't have one yeah. available. I apologize for that. Uh, that was it, the plan, but carriers didn't think the same. So, yeah. They, well, that's because you had that reserved. Way. I'll tell the story because they can't. They we reserved this for this show, but guess what? Customers wanted it, so they had to sell it, and I understand that. But we have great diagrams, yeah. and Harry's going to do a great job explaining it. Uh, by, by the I, way, I we, are, touched... we are in stock on Aldo, so it's not because it's just a matter of delays in the shipping. So we, we, we are in stock on all single products we <clears throat> show today. Beautiful. Yeah. So, Ben, I think I talked about all this stuff on the previous slide, actually. This is a pulp um, uh, a pulp cone. It's all about that efficiency and bringing that from the pulp cone. We have the <laughs> dual um, spiders down here, which is about particularly for high excursion type of speakers, being able to control the motion of that voice coil and voice coil bobbin as it rides up and down uh, in that, you know, in around the pole and in that hole in the magnet. So it doesn't touch the edge or something and start flopping around back and mm -hmm. forth. That's how that spider keeps it, you know, uh, un under control. Um, you know, I have a large magnet here for heat dispersion, but also for the power handling capability. And at 450 watts RMS power handling capability, you've got to have a, a thick and um, uh, multi, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, wrapped uh, voice coil mm. to get that type of power handling capability and the type of tone that we're after with this product. But the most striking thing is that basket. And it is a cast aluminum basket. And that's part, even though it's aluminum, uh, it, and aluminum is generally a little bit lighter, cast aluminum is, is fairly heavy with something this size because that's a 12-inch woofer. It's not, you know, that's it's fairly big woofer. I would catalog, category that as, uh, categorize that as a show basket. Something, if you can yeah. show it, why not? It's pretty. Yeah, I totally agree <clears throat> with you. That is the point of this stuff. Yes, and it matches, Robert. It totally matches. Everything matches. You need you need six tweeters, twelve mid range drivers, and at least twelve subs. That's and that would be and a the lot guys, of fun. Yeah, the guys can tweet this to to the social media if they want to. So it it it's nice to tweet that. <laughs> to tweet it. Yep, got it. Uh, final slide. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's the view I've been waiting to see. Actually, there you go. <clears throat> So, so yeah, I, 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 I mean, think it, this show, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Robert. I'm sorry. Uh, I, 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 I just wanted to say that that's the reason why you said, Harry, that you, you should 
install it in reverse and, and not hide the magnet, but show it. Yeah, you know, high power handling, high sensitivity, high thermal dissipation, uh, wide sound dispersion, and, you know, it's it's high fun factor. That's what this is about. You know, uh, like I have uh, a, a, a flat subwoofer box in the trunk of my car, and you could get in and out of the trunk of my car. And you might never notice the thing. Because it's a shallow mount woofer in a flat box. It's in it's uh, black carpeting in the black trunk. You can honestly, you can get in and out of, the, of that trunk and never notice the thing. And I say that like, that's got like high ninja factor because mm -hmm. you know it, it'll let you know it's there, but only after it's too late. You don't, you can't see it. This is the exact opposite. This has like no ninja factor at all. This is this is like uh, you know Rangers factor. It's coming to find you and let you mm -hmm. know it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, the exact opposite of Ninja Factor, and that's so fun. that's fun. It's almost inspiring because I, I forgot how fun it was to build systems like that. You know, these last few years, I'll be honest, I'm the first to admit it's all been about you know being considerate to the amount of space you have and keeping things stealth and not making too many holes or modifications or. You know, back in the days, I'm building a mini truck. I'm building this. I don't care. I want the gear and I want it to show. And I, I miss that. I do miss that. I can't be the only one. No, I agree with you. It's you it's know? fun, man. Mm -hmm. It's it's fun. Totally that's fun. why it's why I got into this business in the first place. Is I love music, and I love driving around in my car. And somehow or another, I found a job where I could do both of those things. Yeah, amazing, amazing. It's and fun, and don't <laughs> don't you know don't dismiss the fun part of it. Uh, sound quality is great, and if that's what you're after, this is the wrong product for you. You know, uh, which isn't to say it sounds <clears throat> bad. It doesn't sound bad at all. They're really nice sounding speakers, but the goal of this thing is to be loud and in your face. And if that's what you want to do, a little bit of that with your vehicle, take a look at these products. Um, they are worth your consideration. I, you know, I can't say it's the perfect product for everybody who's looking for it, but it's absolutely worth your consideration. Uh, Pioneer has been around a long time. We've built a lot of speakers for a lot of people. We understand what we're doing. This is one more thing to add to that category. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe you haven't seen these speakers before. And if they're new to you, I am very excited to show you something that's new. Um, <laughs> but they are not exactly new in our lineup. They've been around for a while. Maybe you saw them a few years ago and forgot about them. I'm here to remind you that it might be, you know, pretty good I, idea to open up this new category. I think, I think timing. Store. <clears throat> I think, you know what, let's go ahead and take down this presentation. So we can just close this out and discuss a few things I wrote down here. You know, timing has a lot to do with it. You know, other parts of the world have been on this pro audio, you know, deal for quite some time. It's not new, like you said, Eric, but it's new to us. And I think that's what we need to recognize. It's yeah. new to us, which is great because we're not getting in at, you know, uh, version 1.0. You know, yeah. brands like Pioneer have had the time to refine the product, improve the product, make them more efficient, make them sound better. And, and we're getting in at this time where these products are refined for this category. So I think that's a great thing. The other thing is, like everything else, if you don't have it on demo, you can't show the customer why it's perfect for them, right? Because if your soundboard or your demo area only has what I'll call um, classical type speakers, okay, great, that's fantastic. But if you don't have a set of these type of speakers to show, you can't demonstrate what you mean when you say open and loud and clear. Right. Right. I, I, and, and at the price that these components are, do yourself a favor. Put it in a corner somewhere. Build a car with it. Put one box with two subs, two bullet tweeters, and two mid as a standalone and plug it in. You'll hear the difference. And I think the customer. Create a party is, box. Is right yeah, person. just, just, you know what I mean? Just create a party box for, for the shop. That you can Correct. enjoy it when you're doing party with the staff. When, when you go to a show or right outdoor barbecue yeah. somewhere, bring it with you. Of course. Play it. Let yeah. people have fun with it. Let them hear it. Right? Um, so to, to bring this full circle, guys, first of all, thank you, Harry. Great presentation. Uh, I said it from the top. This, the products sound uh, look amazing, and I'm sure they sound amazing. Obviously, it shows Pioneer's dedication to the segment, but also it's refinement of the segment because these are pretty well refined products as i as from what i can see i think the real takeaway here for our, our, our customers listening in from canada and from the us this is a category that exists there are brands like pioneer that have invested the r d the time and the money to come up with products to address these customers your job 
as a dealer is to make sure you're educated and know your customer, probe them and identify who that customer is because there is a product for them and that will make you look like a superstar. Harry, your, your thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right on the money there. Um, you have to know your customers. And, and as, as a retailer, you know your customers far better than I do. And you know your shop far better than I do. We're always looking for new customers and new way to connect with our customers. I said before, you have never seen these products before. And if this is your first time, great. I hope you find something interesting here. Maybe you saw them years ago and you forgot about them because they're not new. It, this is a great opportunity to open, you know, open that door to new customers or that customer that you've had a few years and he has never been able to exactly um, uh, fill the need that he has had. Comes back and says, blew the woofer or blew the tweeters out again. This, this might be exactly the product that he's been looking looking for all that time. So, you know, don't be afraid of those new things. It's, you know, it's time to jump in. We're always looking for something new. Awesome. On that note, Harry, I want to thank you for coming in today and uh, talking tech with us about the pro audio line of drivers from Pioneer. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. I had fun, Ben. See you next time. All right, Mr. Robert. So there you have it. Um, you know, I, I think in the U.S., like where Harry's located, it's already begun. I think it's only starting now in Canada. Um, so yeah, I'd like to hear your perspective on that and where it's going to go. Actually, I, I think that uh, it, it's just a matter of being open mind. So so if the dealers are, are just taking time to qualify, we, we, we're saying this all the time, but uh, I think we need to repeat it, repeat it. Mm -hmm. Take time to qualify the customers, have interaction with the, with the customers, ask questions, listen to those answers from the customers and, and more importantly have fun with the customers when you do that qualification stage the more fun you have with the customers uh the better you will have the answers to find what will match their needs and this can be audiophile great type of speakers like the z series we have uh the d series or the a series no matter what or, or that can be those type of uh, those type of speakers from the pro series, uh, but if you don't take time to ask the right question and 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 have fun by doing it, and you should have fun because we're selling toys for for grown up. Mm -hmm. that, that's what we are doing. We're selling party time in the car. So just so, find out so what kind of fun them. they want to have. Find out yes. what kind of fun they want to have. And, and remember, that, I want to thing. add something. It doesn't matter what your taste is. As the salesperson, oh, it yeah. doesn't matter what you like listening to. You got to make that, sure that you are, you know, providing the customer. That's what I want to mean. <clears throat> that's what I want to mean by saying being open mind. So, so mm -hmm. what is good for you does not necessarily mean that it's good for your customers. So, so stay open mind. Please. Keep an open minded. All right. On that note, thank you so much, Robert, for coming in. Pro audio from Pioneer looks sexy to me, and good luck with that. I'm sure this uh, is going to get some people talking for sure. Take Thanks. care. We are just starting to get our teeth into pro audio. This, this final session for here, here, us here on CMA Networks. We're going right through till November 17th for pro audio brands, which are also going to be anchored with a CMA Live. But before that, let's talk about the, the uh, product information. Um, all of these products can be found on pioneerelectronics.com. Look for it. It's under Car Audio Pro. And you'll see all the specs that were covered today. Now, back to what I was saying. Pro Audio this month on CMA Networks. A couple of brands that are into it. There's going to be more as time progresses. But right through to November 17th is Pro Audio, one brand at a time. Now, <clears throat> one less than a week left to sign up for this incredible contest that we've collaborated with 5Axis and SiriusXM and, of course, Ma uh, Master Tech Expo. It's your chance to win an all-inclusive trip to Master Tech Expo 2023. Simply head over to cmanetworks.com slash giveaway and sign up. The draw is on November 23rd. And while you're there, make sure you check out Pioneer's playlist on CMA Networks along with Harry Kroll's profile. All the great videos that we've done and collaborated together available on cmanetworks.com where the 12-volt industry connects. That's it for the CMA Connected presented by Sirius XM. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect.
Yeah. Roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's last call radio. <laughs> Kevin. You could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's Laugh Out Loud Radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What? <laughs>